Hello, Russ Rogers here with some tips on setting a professional base rig for gigs. I will first show you the rear view of the amp and cabinet and how to hook it up. Then we will take a look at the front view. Okay, get your base, amp, and cables ready and we'll get started with the rear view and setup. Okay, here we have the back view of our separate amplifier head and speaker cabinet. All right, the first thing to take note of is that there's a power strip back here. It's called a power con conditioner, actually. And um, it has some stuff in it that filters out the dirty power. Um, you know, some like if you're playing in a room with fluorescent lights, a lot of times the amplifier will pick up noise from that. This helps filter out some of that. Also, it allows you to plug in some of your effects and other things that you might have. All right. This area right here is the fan that has a switch right here that you can turn on and off. Now, different amps will have different features. These are your connections to where you have your speaker connections here. And if you wanted to hook up to another cabinet, you could hook up two cabinets. Now, this would have like a regular quarter inch speaker cord, and it's real important if you use these that you use speaker cords not just regular cables. This will damage your amplifier if you do this. So uh, make sure you use actually certified speaker cables, quarter inch speaker cables. And then actually what's better is these Spectron cables here that hook in to these spots right here. And you have two of them, one right there and one right there. This is actually a better connection. If you have a choice on using quarter inch or one of these guys, I highly recommend using these to get a better sound. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is connect your amps power to the power conditioner. And you will need uh, your speaker, your, your power cord that comes with the amp. Usually the ones that come with the amp, however, though, aren't very good quality. Now these things can go up to five and six hundred dollars just for a power cord. And that may seem ridiculous, but if you're really working in detail recording and really quality audio, the better your power cable, the better it is going to be for your sound. Um, but anyway, what you do is you hook up into the power port on the back of the amp. and then plug this into the power strip in the back of the amp there. This cable here is coming from, the power cable here is coming from the actual power strip itself. This would go into the wall. Power this up and plug it into the wall. And then I would hook up my speaker cables. Now on some amps, uh, they have these Spectrons that one's supposed to go into the head and one's supposed to go into the cabinet. But these will be specialty cables and you'll know from your amplifier's uh, handbook on how to use it, instruction book, that whether you need a specific cable. But generally, you know, it's just like quarter inch uh, cables, both are the same. And so you just plug it in there and turn it so it connects and then plug the other one into the amp. All right, now this control right here on the back of the amplifier controls the amount or level of highs and upper mids that go to your horn or tweeter in the cabinet. So usually if this is set at, at 12 o'clock, you're not boosting or cutting that frequency. All right, uh, I generally like to boot mine up a little bit, but uh, you know, some people like different things here. So just the best thing to do is just, when you hook up your bass, turn that knob and see how, you know, see how it sounds. But it will definitely add a lot of brightness to your sound for like slap playing and playing with a pick and certain things like that are good. This area right here is a connection that you would use to a recording board or a mixing board if you're playing live. You see right here is your XLR output that you use a mic cable 
to hook up to. And then you have a, a lot of times a ground switch here. So if you have a hum, reach in here and flick that switch back or forth. And then you have actually a pad control here. This knob here, which will turn up and down the level, sending the signal to the PA or, or uh, mixing board. And then this little jack right here is a tuning tuner out, which takes the tuner, if you're using a tuner and you don't want your signal going through the, the, the tuner and back into the amp, this takes the tuner out of the signal path. So a lot of times this is good to use. And then you have your usual effects loop stuff, return and send, and then preamp out if you wanted to come out and go into a power amp, another power amp, and bypass this power amp. So a lot of amps will have a lot of features and how you can hook stuff up in, in different configurations. But uh, those are the most important ones. Now let's take a look at the front view. Okay, the first thing we're going to want to do is, uh, like with any amp, always plug your bass in first and then plug into the amplifier. Now, like most amps, they'll have a high gain and a low gain, depending on whether you have an uh, active system or a passive system. Some people like to run active systems in the high gain and just turn down the output of the instrument and use it that way. So there's different configurations. There's not an absolute right or wrong, but if you do plug into the high gain and you have a lot of output coming out of your bass, you could end up having not, not much headroom in your preamp, and uh, it'll affect your sound adversely. All right, so we plug in our bass first and then to the amp. Then on the power strip here, we engage our power. And if you take note here, it tells you how much power is coming in from, from your outlet. All right, so if it's below into that red, you definitely have a problem that your amp is not going to have enough power to operate correctly. It's always good to have it in the green here. Now, if it's too much, it'll be in the red here, you could actually burn out your system. So it's good to check this, you know, and see where your power is going to be. And also wait till the other instruments are hooked up, like amps of guitars and keyboards and all that stuff. Get everything turned on before you make a final evaluation here. Because if you're the only thing on, then it might be reading fine. Then everybody else kicks their stuff on and it comes way down. So it's a good thing to take a look at. And then I have my light switch here that turns on these LEDs to light up to help you see on dark stages and stuff, right? And this little button here actually operates a light that's in the back so you can see the back panel, you know, if it's a dark stage. So that's a handy feature. And usually you have to buy those lights separately, but anyway, that's what that switch there does. And then over here, you have an extra power outlet that you could plug something in if you needed to. Anyway, what's, once that's on, then I turn uh, on my amplifier. And a lot of amps will have an on and off speaker switch or a mute switch, it's sometimes called. So once my amp's on, then I have the mute switch here, which actually engages the speakers. All right. At this point, you want to have your turn your master volume down. And then on the preamp gain, Turn that up until you get the, there's usually a clip light, which is right here, and get it where on your loudest note, with the amp guitar all the way up, just blinks just a little bit. If I went to the other gain here, I don't know if you can see that come on a little bit. See that light come on? Now if it comes on a lot, then it's too too much. So you want it just on your loudest note, and you don't have to actually hear the loudest note, you just have to have everything up except for your master volume so you don't have to blow everybody out of the room. But just where you get on your loudest note, that blinks just a little bit, and that's where that should be set. And then you, you uh, turn up your master volume, get your desired playing level. Then you go through and adjust your EQ. Now, different amps have a lot of different EQ settings and you'll have amps with P 
parametric and graphic and combinations of parametric and graphic and all kinds of stuff. But basically just get your tone controls set up the way you like them and you should be good to go. Now the important thing about powering down an amp like this because it's a very powerful amplifier and you can just really blow up your speakers very easily if you don't do this right. Make sure if you have a mute switch, do that first, then turn off the amp, and then you can like either shut down the uh, power strip or not, that's not really important at this point, but what is important is that you unplug from the base, from the base amp first, then take the plug out of your base. Right, never pull the plug out of the base while the plug is in the amplifier. You're begging for a disastrous consequence for your speakers. So um, remember, always shut off the amp, unplug from the amp, then unplug from your base. Thanks for tuning in, and please take the time to check out my other free and premium videos. This is Russ Rogers, and I'll see you next time.